Hi there, this is Patricia from patriciafenty.com and today I have a tutorial on how to crochet this really beautiful scarf. It is totally beginner friendly. It is such a simple stitch. You won't believe how easy this is to make. All you need to know is a chain stitch, single crochet, a half double crochet, and you have the option to make it with or without tassels and it is so simple to make. I'm really excited to share this tutorial with you. So let's get started. All right, for this tutorial, I'm using the Bernat Premium Yarn. I just love this yarn. It's very economical and they have a lot of beautiful colors. It's a number four medium weight yarn. It's acrylic and this color is called Dahlia. And it's a beautiful color. I would actually call it like raspberry cream or something. So this is a big ball of yarn. It's uh, seven ounces, 198 grams. 360 yards or 329 meters so that will be plenty of yarn for the project you'll need some scissors and the crochet hook for the body will be a four millimeter or g6 and for the foundation row you need to do the row very loose so you can go up a size so you can use a five millimeter or an h8 or you can crochet the row very loosely and you'll need a darning needle which i don't have here now I just want to show you the difference here in color and weight of yarn. These are both number four medium weight yarns. This is a, the Bernat Premium and this here is the Lion Brand Ferris Wheel in the Carousel color. So they're calling this a number four medium weight yarn but you can see that it's actually quite a bit finer than the Bernat. And so this is a heavier yarn here. And you can see the swatches are the same. They're both 16 chains and you can see the difference in size. I did also use a smaller crochet hook, the three and a half millimeter, because I want these stitches to be tight. You don't want a loose stitch stitch for a scarf. If you use a bigger hook, the stitches would be looser and it wouldn't make for a very warm scarf. So I like scarves to use a slightly smaller crochet hook so you get a tighter, warmer stitch. All right, so I'm going to work with a four millimeter crochet hook so I can show you how to make a really loose stitch. So you'll start with a slip knot, and if you're new to crochet, I'll leave a link below for my beginner crochet series that will teach you everything you need to know to do this project, and I will go slow as well. So you'll put the loop on your hook with the tail to the right, and you wanna leave that loop fairly big, a nice big loose loop. Set up your tension and yarn over and pull a loop through to create a chain and I'm going to pull that up nice and loose very loose chain or use the larger crochet hook so yarn over and pull that through to create your second chain again keeping these very loose yarn over and pull that through then pull it up on your hook to make a nice big loop yarn over and pull that through and you'll do a chain with an even number of stitches. So you can make this scarf as wide or as narrow as you like. You could even make it into a pocket shawl or you could make it a very long and narrow scarf. You can do anything you like, so long as you have an even number of chains to begin with. So I'm going to begin with a chain 20 and I will do that and I'll show you what to do next. All right, so there's my very loose chain of 20 chains and now we're going to work our way back with a row of single crochet. So you'll chain one and this is your turning chain and now you're going to work your way back and you'll see that your chain has three loops. There's a V stitch at the front and a bump at the back and we're going to work into the back bump. So not the stitch that you just came out of, you'll go into the next one, 
going into the back bump, going under the loop, yarn over, bring the yarn through. You'll have two loops on your hook, yarn over and pull through two loops and that's a single crochet. And then again, you're going into the back bump, pull the yarn through, you'll have two loops on your hook, pull through and you've done a single crochet. Now with this row of single crochet, you can use the five millimeter crochet hook or carry on also doing a loose tension. It's not going to be quite as loose as the chain stitches, but you do want to keep this tension for this row of single crochet fairly loose. So you're going to do a single crochet into that back bump of each stitch all the way along and you'll have 20 single crochets at the end of this row. So I'll see you there. Okay, so coming to the end of row one, that's 20 single crochets or however many you started off with, not including your turning chain. So now you're going to chain two and turn your work or turn your work and chain two, it doesn't matter. And if you are working with a five millimeter crochet hook at this point, you would drop that and you would go to your four millimeter crochet hook. So chain two, turn your work and you'll, you'll see you have chain one, chain two, and then this is your first stitch of this row. You'll skip that stitch and going into the second stitch, you'll yarn over and you'll do a half double crochet going under both loops Pull the yarn from behind, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops and that's a half double crochet. Then you're going to chain one and then you're going to do a half double crochet back into that same stitch. So yarn over, go back into the same stitch, pull your yarn from behind, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. Now you'll skip a stitch and into the second stitch, you'll repeat that same stitch. So yarn over, you'll have three loops on your hook, yarn over, pull through all three loops. So doing a half double crochet and then chain one and then another half double crochet into that same stitch. And then you'll skip a stitch and then into the next stitch, you'll repeat that same thing. So one half double crochet, chain one, and another half double crochet into the same stitch. And you'll repeat that all the way to the end of the row, skip a stitch, and into the second stitch, you'll do a half double crochet, chain one, and a half double crochet. So go ahead and repeat that to the end of row two, and you'll have nine V stitches. All right, so coming to the end of the row, I'm completing my ninth V stitch, half double crochet V stitch, and you should have two stitches left at the end of the row. You'll skip one stitch, and in the last stitch, you'll do a half double crochet, just one half double crochet, and that is the end of the this row. And even though we did that so loose, it's still wanting to curl down, but that will straighten out later on. So this is sort of the setup row. So now you can chain two and turn your work. And this is where the pattern repeat begins. Now what you've done is you've created a row of nine half double crochet V stitches. And so you're going to skip this stitch here and going into the chain one space of the first V stitch, you're going to work another half double crochet V stitch. So a half double crochet, chain one, and a half double crochet into that chain one space into that V stitch. You'll then go over to the next V stitch and work the half double crochet V stitch. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet into the chain one space. And make sure you are working into the chain one space and not into the stitch in between the V stitches. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet into the chain one space and you're going to work that to the end of the row and you'll have nine half double crochet V stitches. 
and that is the pattern repeat. So go ahead and work that to the end of the row and I'll show you how to finish the end of this row. All right, so coming to the end of row three, I have one more V stitch to work into or chain one space. So half double crochet, chain one, half double crochet. And when you come to the end of each row, you'll have that chain two from the previous row. And you're going to go not into the first chain, but into the second chain with a half double crochet. And you wanna pick up two loops of that chain and do a half double crochet. And that's the end of row three. And you can see how nicely that the pattern is starting to take shape. So that's the pattern repeat. It's that simple. So you just chain two and turn your work or turn your work chain two and then go over to the very first V stitch, the very first chain one space and work your half double crochet V stitch. And just working your half double crochet V stitches in every chain one space or V stitch from the previous row. And you'll just work that back and forth and back and forth. And that's why you can make this scarf really any size you like. You can make it narrow and really long. You can make it nice and wide and make it into a pocket shawl. You can do anything you like with this really. So just carry on going back and forth, repeating row three until you have the scarf to the length that you like. So I'll carry on and then I'll come back and show you how to finish off the last row and how to put on tassels. So we'll see you there. All right, welcome back. I can't get the scarf in the camera and I have it as long as I want, which is 58 inches or 147 centimeters. This ended up being a total of 118 rows of repeat of row three. So of course you can make it any width or any length that you like. So here's where we're going to do the last row. So you'll just do a chain one this time and turn your work. And just at the base of your chain one, you'll have your first stitch of the row. So you'll do a single crochet in that first stitch going under both loops and do a single crochet into the next stitch and then skip a stitch and a single crochet into the next two stitches and then skip a stitch and single crochet into the next two stitches. And you'll do that all the way along where you'll do a skip a stitch and single crochet and two stitches. So I'll see you at the end of this row. All right, so I've just done my two uh, single crochets and this will be a little bit tricky to see. You're going to skip a stitch and do a single crochet which looks like the last stitch but there's one more to do which is in the second chain of that beginning chain two. You want to do one more single crochet into that turning chain. You want to make sure to get that last stitch. And so then you'll have a total of 20 single crochets along the top and that's what you started with. And so then you can just snip that off and then do a chain one to fasten off and snug that up. And then you can darn in your tail ends on each end and now this pattern is really quite lovely so that you could just leave the scarf as is and not put any tassels on, especially if you made it long enough because it's really such a, a beautiful finish. I'll just zoom out here so you can see that better. Ooh, wow, the look at the light. That actually shows it a little bit better. So yeah, so you can just leave the edges like that but if you wanna put tassels, I'll show you how to do that next. All right, so if you decide to put tassels, there's a few different ways that you can do them. You could do one or two tassels in every single stitch all the way along, kind of depends on the yarn that you're using, or you could do 
two or three tassels in every other stitch like that or you could do three or four tassels in every third stitch and that's what I'm going to do I'm going to do three tassels in every third stitch now whether you're doing every other stitch or every third stitch you're going to end up with an extra stitch at the end just because of the number of stitches here so I will just start on one side and do a tassel here skip two stitches two stitches and I'll go all the way along and when that, once I get to this end I'll be skipping three stitches and that'll be fine you won't even see that so depending on the width of your scarf you'll have to figure out the spacing for that and so I'll show you how to make tassels next now to do your tassels you'll need a jig of some sort and you can use any cardboard that you have handy you want it to be half the length of your tassels plus an inch so these are nine inches when I wrap it all the way around the box it gives me a nine inch tassel which will give me a three and a half inch to four inch length tassel so you can make them any size you like I just happen to have this box and I thought this made a nice size tassel so I know I'll need seven sets of three tassels for each side so that'll be 42 strands of yarn all together so all you do is you just use your jig a piece of cardboard whatever you have and just wrap it around the jig as uh, many wraps as you need I'll just do a couple here and and you might want to wrap a half a dozen or so at a time and then once you have enough wraps you just cut it along the bottom here and there you have your strand of yarn there for your tassels so I'm going to go ahead and cut all my strands of yarn and so I'll do that and I'll come back and I'll show you how to attach them all right once you, you have all your strands cut you can put them into little groups of two or three or four whatever you decide and you'll just fold them in half and then coming in from the back of your work with a crochet hook and this scarf is uh, two-sided like it doesn't have a right side just come in from the back of your work you can put the strands on the hook and pull it through the stitch pull it all the way through far enough that you can get your finger in there and you just sort of want to straighten them out as best as you can um, it doesn't have to be perfect because we will be trimming them later and then you just want to bring your tail ends in through the loop you can bring your fingers in from behind and grab the strands pull them through and snug it up and try to keep them nice and even and keep your knot nice and even and there we go and that's one tassel done and again these will be even but we'll be trimming those later on so then take your second set of strands and fold them in half find the center and for me I'm skipping two stitches and going into the third stitch coming from behind and I'm going under two loops here grab the strap grab the strands pull them through and even them out as best as you can and then just put your fingers into the loop and pull the strands through the loop and snug that up nice and even and keep it all as even as possible just like that and there we go so you can carry on and I will come back and show you how mine looks all right here we go so there are all the tassels on and here's where I had to skip three stitches and you can't really tell so that worked out really well so you can see how the the tassels are uneven and you're just going to trim them so you can um, just trim them you can eyeball it if you like or you can use a straight edge and uh, just lay it flat on there 
like that and snip the edges but you just want to make sure that they're laying nice and flat and you can even use the ruler to sort of pull them flat like that and then lay it down and then you can just use that to snip along your edges and again you could just eyeball it if you like you might want them to be a little bit uneven so it's not a real perfect look so that's a way you can do it and then of course when you repeat the tassels on the other side you want to make sure that you're looping the tassels in the same direction as you did you want to make sure that those bumps are on the same side of the scarf like the front side if you want to call it that and so you can just snip your ends and look how nice and neat that is and then you can just go along and do any little odd ends there and there we go so go ahead and do that on the other side and i'll come back and i'll show you the final reveal here it is all done and so this worked up so beautifully and this is how much yarn was left from that big ball of yarn so you could make this scarf a little longer i'm short so this length was good for me and then I just gave it a little press with my hand steamer. You could wash it according to the yarn directions and lay it flat to dry to block it. And then that's it. And this is such a super easy pattern, very quick, very beginner friendly. So I hope you enjoy this tutorial. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my YouTube channel for more creative and inspiring videos. We'll see you next time.